right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Man, it's that time of the month again. Optima batteries, where to start. It's a lot of fun. Like, I say it's a lot of fun. This month, I've got some tough flakes. I went through and looked at a lot of the comments, and I am breaking down, doing a couple lakes that I've avoided because you guys keep putting them in the comments, and a lot of you like it's. So you're gonna make me work really hard. I've, I've been working on this most of the morning, like three, four hours. So uh, uh, a lot of time I've been spending looking at these lakes. Not that I'm gonna say that I'm even right, but we're gonna try to take a stab at it and uh, we'll see. But first things first, let's get to last month's winner. I've got it right here. Um, it is Mike, I'm gonna say Mooney, M-O-O-N-E-Y. He said, uh, definitely some solid advice and definitely some new techniques that I will try and be trying soon. Thanks, E. Buddy, you just want a free Optima battery. All you gotta do is send me an email through my website. I will have Optima batteries mail you a certificate. Appreciate you leaving the comment. Appreciate you being a new subscriber. And uh, man, just appreciate you guys all watching the channel, leaving those comments. So with that said, the lakes that we're gonna do this, this month, the month of April, I can't believe it. I broke down, I'm gonna do Shasta. And I went and I looked at that lake this morning. That thing is 137 feet low. I've never, I, I, we'll take a stab at it guys is all I got to say. Lake Sinclair there in Georgia, another lake that I, I'm not familiar with. It looks really cool. It looks like a lot of lakes that I've been to. It looks to me like it's got one thing on it that kind of gives it a, a, a curveball. It looks like it's got a power plant on it. Uh, and then we're going to go to, to one I have been to, Jordan Lake there in North Carolina. Uh, uh, just a lake I like a lot. I've been there a few times. Uh, a, a neat, neat lake. So those are the three lakes we're going to break down. Um, you know, one thing about these videos, though, you know, like this Sinclair Lake that I'm looking at right here, it's 15,000 acres, 400 miles of shoreline. It relates to a lot of other lakes. Um, you know, it looks a lot like a Table Rock. looks a lot like a Beaver, like a Lake of the Ozarks. You know, it... It's, uh, you know, I'm, I, it's got to have spotted bass in it, I assume. It's got to have a blueback herring in it, but it's also going to have shad. So, you know, especially the month of April, a lot of this stuff is more like where I look, you know, where I start, you know, because those fish are going to be spawning uh, in the month of April. And, and, and there's going to be a, a, a shad spawn and a herring spawn starting towards the end of April. Um, you know, Shasta is kind of a different lake. There's not a lot of lakes around like this part of the country for, for me to relate to, but for you guys out in California, Arizona that, that really fluctuate a bunch, you know, that lake will, will relate to the others. And then Jordan Lake's kind of a, another flatland reservoir. It's a lot like a, oh shoot, like here in Oklahoma, I think it's a lot like McGee Creek. I think it's a lot like some of those East Texas lakes. Uh, it's kind of more of an in-between lake, you know, it's got a lot of flat water, but it does have steep water too. It's really a unique lake, another 13,000 acre lake, only with 180 miles of shoreline there in North Carolina. So let's get started. Let's go into Sinclair. Sinclair, I think I'm saying that right. This lake's just north and east of Georgia when I look at it. Um, north and east, no, it's, it's south and east of Atlanta. I was thinking, when I was saying Georgia, I was thinking Atlanta. Uh, but here it is on my sea map. And when I look at this thing, it has got just, holy smokes, I mean a lot of shoreline, just tons. Like, it, you know, we, we, we just fished last month, uh, uh, Smith Lake in Alabama. It, it reminds me a lot of that with all that kind of shoreline spotted bass. Um, so, you know, for me to break this down, a couple things, this like when I look at the 30,000 foot view of this lake, I see another lake up here above it. And in my mind, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of times on these lakes, the water comes out of the bottom of the dam. So, uh, or even if it's coming through the dam, I've got water flow up in this river all the time where I think it's the opposite. I think these fish spawn last. And, and why I say that is like I had an event one time on Clark's Hill and one way up one of those rivers, um, I caught them sight fishing still in June, caught like an eight pounder, uh, May or June. I don't remember. It was the end of May, first of June. I caught them an eight pounder sight fishing. So if that's the case on this lake, you know, and you've got cold water, you know, that spawn is going to be really extended. Or if, if the water's flooded, you know, that happens a lot of times too. If you get really high water, when that water comes back down, uh, 
you know, then those fish will spawn. I think Sinclair's a foot and a half low, so it's not flooded right now. But, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. I'm not really gonna start or fish anything up that river, but that, in my mind, that's why I'm not even looking up there, because I feel like that could be colder water, not as stable of water. Uh, those fish could spawn a lot later. I love this section of the lake right here where it all comes together. To me, that's just, it has a lot, lot going on it, going for it. But, but the one thing that kind of, after I looked at it a little bit further, you know, and I, get, I take it from my sea map over to my uh, Google map, it's got a power plant on it. Now, I, you know, I don't know. So many power plants don't run anymore. Maybe this one does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, but that's kind of different, you know, because I really disliked this creek right here. Uh, to me, it had a really big spawning flat, all this red in the back, you know, shallow water, had a bridge. Um, you know, that's that right there. This water right here is going to really warm up fast with or without this power plant. To me, I just thought, man, that's a cool looking creek that would warm up fast. That way it's angled, the sun's going to be in that all afternoon. You know, this north bank's going to be like a one of the first banks I, I feel like fish would be spawning on on that whole lake. It's just a cool, cool area and it's a place to start like that bridge right there, you know, fish going back and forth. Well, I see there's even a boat ramp right there. So probably lots of tournaments go out of there. So it's maybe even a better place to start. You might have a lot of released fish. There has to be tournaments out of that spot now that I see that boat ramp. I didn't see that at first. So let's move on. Let's, uh, let's, I, I looked at this quite a bit. And when I ran out this other, when I went out this arm right here, something that kind of stood out to me was, was these couple creek arms that went off to the left, this little cedar and this sand creek. Um, and, and what I saw out here, I think, is that right? Oh, I saw this right up here too. I just saw like these two bridges, you know, these two bridges way up. And this would have been up, what river? Little river, that's up the little river. So to me, this is where the water starts mixing. So I've got dirtier water coming in, clean water down at the dam. This is gonna, I always like to find a section in the lake where it mixes and every lake's different. You know, I, it's just table rock. You know, that water mixes, you know, somewhere up in that James area around that Cape Fair area. Beaver's way up there, you know, if it does mix. Um, you know, Grand, it mixes, you know, all in and around, you know, like Honey Creek to, to uh, uh, sailboat bridge sometimes down to a, a horse creek, you know, so I always like to look to where that water mixes and, and, and I, I don't know, I'm just telling you that's a place to start. So find where that water's mixing. In this photo, it's mixing right here. It's, you know, it's going from the muddier to the clean water, you know, and around these bridges. These bridges will be great, great places to start. You got stuff coming together. Uh, I just like how they look. I was going to see if I could find a uh, lower, look how muddy it is right there. Holy smokes. Y'all get some mud in that place. So now there in that photo, wow. If I had that scenario, I'd be in that creek right there. I'd, I'd have to get out of this mud until it was super warm. Or you got that little stretch of clean water right there. Um, you know, and just always remember when you have that muddy of water, they clean up from the back first. You can just see like this is all clean back here. Uh, you know, that mud's being pulled around that point. So this pocket has stayed clean. That's the kind of stuff I would look for no matter what, you know, with that muddy of a condition on that lake. Um, there it is again under normal. I was just trying to see if there's a low water photo uh, anywhere on that. So that's the most current photo. Let's use that. And then let's talk about, so we, we've talked about a couple bridges. We've talked about uh, where the water mixes. Let's just pick a spawning spot really quick. I like how this rolls around. We've got a 90 degree angle, this outside bend, this pocket right here. Uh, if I just had to pick a spawning pocket, um, I like this main lake point right here. Now I feel like spotted bass big spotted bass spawn on main lake points. I just, I feel like they don't go way back up in those creeks. Um, I feel like if I could find a rounded, flatter main lake point, and let's just see what one looks like here on my sea map. So that's that bridge there. So that's right there. You can see I've got just a extended red on that point right there. So, you know, I, I feel like on a lake like this where the water's pretty clear most of the time, especially down towards the dam, 
you know, they're going to spawn in that five to 15 feet of water. You know, obviously that's going to change as you move around on that lake. But to pick another spot like this point right here, see how this inside point, like that gravel bar sticks out? To me, that's going to be a spot, spots spawn. Um, I just, I like that spot right there on my sea map. Um, a main lake deal that those fish can, can spawn on. It's going to be protected from south winds. You know, that whole lake's going to be protected. But I look for main lake stuff when I get on a spotted bass fishery, and I'm pretty sure Sinclair is a spotted bass fishery. This point right here could be one. It's got deep water really close. So could that one, just depending on the water levels. Uh, that point right there, you know, it's got a little bit of a tip to it. There's kind of a, a, a secondary point that, that's not really pronounced. You know, that would be like a sneaky spot right there. That one right there would be a sneaky spot, you know, because this says point, but that's a straight bank with a point on it. That's a straight bank with a point. Those are sneaky ones. Those are good ones right there. There's another one that sticks out kind of on that main lake. I don't get way back up in those pockets, you know, on a lake like this. I want to fish more main lake stuff because I just feel like that's where the bigger bass would be on a lake like that. So that's a few spots on Sinclair, you know, also looking at it, uh, there's lots of seawalls. Um, man, any of those seawalls could be dynamite, like, like just they spawn up next to those seawalls. Any of those main lake, main point seawalls, I would fish, you know, you can just see there's seawalls everywhere on this lake and and those are just if you got too many of them yeah you're gonna have to break them down and, and just fish those main lake points those rounded ones those flatter ones uh, but those can always be good as the end of april comes along think about those same same flats uh, those same flat points and and that herring spawn happening so any of those points that run way out there you know that are flat two to three foot of water on them um, those are going to be where those herring are going to spawn um, and those are going to be those places where those spotted bass will be chasing and throwing your top water towards the end of April. So real quick, that was Sinclair. Let's move to, do I do Shasta next or I do Sinclair or uh, Jordan next? Uh, I'm really scared about Shasta, so I'm going to do Jordan. And I want to, I want to go back to a few of the comments that I had last month. I had a lot of people say Rayburn. I had a lot of people say Toledo Bend. You know, to that question, I want to ask it again this month because it's just interesting to me. Of all the lakes in the country, which one do you think has had the most bass ever caught in it? You know, I said Rayburn. I said Toledo. I said possibly Toho or Okeechobee, Gunnersville. Somebody said Lake Erie. You know, it's been around since the start of time. Uh, but you guys can't fish Lake Erie in the winter. It doesn't get the pressure that we get on Rayburn and Toledo Bend. So I just always throw that out there. Somebody said Lake Fork for big ones, and that's a great lake too. Uh, I just always, I'm gonna, that's when I get to heaven, I'm gonna ask God, what lake has been had the most bass caught in it? I just think that's a kind of a neat deal. All right, moving on, got sidetracked. We're, we said we're going to Jordan Lake. Let's uh, see if I can find that here. North Carolina, and and so who left me a comment? Let's see, I had a lot of people. Pete Cook said Sinclair, Chad Register said Sinclair. I had Byron Hendricks fish and say Sinclair, but then I had old, uh, I want to say it was Dewey Lee. Somebody says I don't ever do North Carolina lakes, and I'm like, Dewey, I have done Lake Norman, I know. I feel like I've done a couple others. I just would have to go back through my archives and see what all North Carolina lakes I have done. So Jordan Lake, um, a cool lake. It's 13,000 uh, acres, 180 miles of shoreline. The month of April, right now this lake is two and a half feet high. So that's pretty cool. Like it's just, the bushes are in the water, like super good in the water. So when I look at that lake there, you know, if I'm, if I'm wanting to fish shallow bushes, I want to find some dirty off colored water. Uh, you know, so it's going to be just basically a really visual thing for me running around looking, you know, for off colored water, dirty water. And a lot of times I think this whole lake could be that way. You know, some of these main lake points, if I've got water in these willow trees like this right here, those things could be killer, like super killer just for a spot for a bass to transition to the back of this pocket to spawn. He's going to stop at, the, at that point right there on the way out, and he, he'll probably spawn on that point. You know, this riprap bank in the back could be good, but I think with the water high, it's not going to be, you know, as productive as, say, when you get back up in these creeks like this, 
and you look at this flooded stuff all back here, um, it could just be phenomenal, like unbelievable. I mean, some of this stuff, like when we were there in the past, some of these ponds way back in here, you could get in them and they just were loaded with bass. So for me, that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for in April. I wanna find ones that aren't super muddy, cleaner than, than you know, say like it, it can be dirty, but I don't want it like super muddy. Like, you know, if, if I can find these backwater ponds that are a little cleaner, see like how all this bleeds into clean water right here? That would be a, if I can get to there, I don't know on that particular spot if I can get to there, but that would be a good spot. You know, to me this, if the water's up and you can get into this little pond right here, um, the one time I was there, I could get right across this thing and, and man, just this little pond right here, you got all these cypress trees, you got riprap, you got just a perfect place for bass to spawn when you get in this thing. You know, the water was high enough that I got across there. I don't know exactly what the level needs to be to get in there, but it's super protected. It's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I look for, you know, in and around the spawn when fish are spawning. If I was to take it one step further and let's say the lake's not high. Let's, I think I've got a photo that I found here with the lake low. Okay, right here, 2014, the lake was low. When you look at this pocket right here, I put a marker on this pocket because it's a steeper bank. You know, you, you see all this back here and how flat it is. You know, a, a big fish, now I'm not saying you can't catch fish back here, especially if it's two and a half feet high, but if a lake was normal or, uh, you know, you're looking for, you know, a special fish, they're gonna spawn where they, they're comfortable, like where they got deep water really close. So you can see like, I don't have very much sand showing there or shoreline showing there. So that tells me that's a steeper bank compared to this here where there's a bunch of it showing. The, there'll be fish back there obviously, but on a spot like here, like where this creek channel is up closer and the sun shining on it, I just, I like this bank better because deeper water is close by. Uh, let's see if I, I think I marked one other one here just, just to look at, you know, if you had, if you took the water off of it. See, you know, like if you looked at this creek here, you know, it's all flat, 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 but I've seen so many times in my career that there'll be a lot more fish spawning right down this bank versus that stretch there because they have deep water close by, the water never gets pulled off their head, they feel comfortable on that stretch. I'm not saying you can't catch some here, but there'll be more in a lot of lakes that I fish across the country where there is always water close to them, no matter what the le water level gets. Cause those bass know like, man, there's just times that the lake gets super, super low. Um, you know, I just said, go back in these areas and try and yes, but you got a ditch that'll feed those areas. So those bass can still get in and out. Um, I had another spot I wanted to show you somewhere. That's kind of cool, an old roadbed crossing it right there. Railroad is what that is. I mean, that'd be a good spot for them fish to stack up summertime. There's a spot to start in June. So those fish are coming out. Let's see here. I had another marker on here. Where'd it go? Ah, oh, here we go. Down here, can you get in this creek? I see a bridge. Let me just make sure. <laughs> Bummer. Well, if you're in a kayak, you can. There's a canoe launch. So let's give you guys that fish out of a kayak a place to start. So you can see here, and it is an example for anywhere across the country. See how this creek comes up close to this bank and then it curves away? That stretch right there is going to be a better stretch than this side right here. Same thing right here. That creek's on this side. That stretch right there is going to be a better stretch than this side over here because you have deep water close by. Um, you know, I think that's important to look at, you know, on lakes, you know, when fish are wanting to spawn, they want sometimes just a little bit steeper of a bank than something that's super flat to where the water could get pulled off of them. So I kind of get my lakes confused out there. Falls Lake, Jordan Lake, I've been on all those, but those are a couple places to start. You know, we talked about that, that Willow Points, Main Lake Points. Um, oh, here's the one where there's another lake back here, I think. I don't think you can get back underneath this bridge. One of those lakes you can't get underneath the bridge. I don't know which one it is. Anytime you got those bridges, those are great places to start. Got another old road right here, so that could all be really good come, you know, later in the year. Uh, 
I like this pocket right here, but I, I'm afraid this is all super flat back here. So I'm gonna focus more on these, this stuff right here. So there's one more spot right here. You know, you look at a place to start, you know, the end of April, those fish, the beginning of April, they could spawn right there on that old road bed. Um, you know, you could Carolina rig that if the water's down, you know, if the water starts coming down, that could be a great spot to start. Uh, but there's a few spots on Jordan, guys. Um, it's a neat lake. It's not a very big lake. Uh, I think, you know, it's kind of, it's got big fish in it, but you know, I, I kind of want to focus where I've got deep water a little bit closer on those spawning flats on a lake like that. All right, the last lake, and talk about deep water. Lake Shasta out in California. You guys wait till you see this. I mean, I just was blown away looking at this thing this morning. Zoom out here and we will get out to Lake Shasta. This thing is in far Northern California. I have been to Clear Lake. I have been to the Delta. I've never been to Shasta. So uh, I just haven't guys, so I'm sorry. So this is completely like what I would do if I was headed out there for the first time ever uh, <clears throat> to this lake. So when I look at this lake from the big view picture, and I'm thinking April, I'm thinking Northern California, I'm thinking things are probably still cold, I'm thinking snow is melting up in these mountains, I would have to think. I mean, there's snow on that mountain. Uh, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this river here, this river here, that river there is gonna be flowing pretty cold. Like, like for me, a guy from Oklahoma that runs way up rivers, I'm probably not gonna run way up those rivers where it's really cold. I did a little research. I think in 2014, this Google Earth photo might be close to what you guys are experiencing out there right now. Like I said, it's 137 feet low. I just blown away by that. Um, but you know, some of the same principles still all apply whether you're out there on a super deep canyon lake like this or, you know, Table Rock, you know, so like I'm, for me, I'm gonna look for where that water mixes yet. I don't wanna get way up to where that cold water's coming in. Um, and I think, in my opinion, this river right here, Potom Creek Falls or whatever it is, looks to me like it's got a lot more flow than this river here. You know, this river here is dirtier. In this photo, this one's cleaner. I think this dirtier water is gonna warm up quicker. Um, I'm gonna start in this river arm, just from what I've looked at, what I've seen. Um, and I'm probably gonna start in this pocket right here because I feel like it's super protected. You know, I feel like fish are gonna be spawning in April. It's time for them to come up. Um, it's just, it's protected from the wind. And then I'm gonna go in here and you know, I've got some bigger rocks right here on this side where it's super smooth all down through here. You know, I've got some bigger rocks right here, a flatter area. You know, I got steep bank on this side, flatter area, lots of sun shining on it. Um, I just kind of like the way that looks. I get to the back of this thing. I've got some standing timber. Uh, I was shocked to see standing timber in this, in this lake. I didn't, man, I didn't know it. It's, it's 100 foot underneath the water when it's full. Um, but I, I don't know, I kind of like the way that thing looks. I marked another spot on here after I studied it quite a bit. Oh, up this one right here, because it's again a smaller creek, a smaller river, uh, going to be a little bit cleaner water, but it just really stuck out to me when I looked at it on this Google Earth because of these big rocks and, and different colored rocks, you know, they're white rocks. You know, I remember back in the day on Texoma, there were some pockets that had whiter rocks in them, and man, those fish gravitated to those those pockets like early in the spring over other pockets and I don't know if it was the white rocks or just better pockets but ever since then I always look for this kind of stuff so you know I've got this slick bank and then I've got all this rock change right here I've got one over here uh, you know it's protected from a north wind it's just clean um, I don't know it's a place that I would definitely go check out you know looking at this map um, at these different rock changes. There's a boat right there, it looks like. So somebody else thought it was a good spot. Again, I got another little rock patch there and one there. I don't know what these, these rocks are a different rock than any other kind of rock on the lake. And it just really looks unique to me. I think this is a super cool area on the lake. Now, not maybe for April, but look at this saddle going through here. So like anytime you've got some wind blowing, um, you're gonna have water movement. You can see the, the currents 
going through this right now, you know, I just, man, I'd have to, I'd have to think bass are going to use this somehow, some way, um, you know, with, with just that bottleneck right there. That's the kind of stuff that I look for a lot. Um, you know, this photo is really hard to tell how flat some of this stuff is, but you know, these big rounded points like this with some scattered rocks, it's got something scattered on it. I have to feel like there'd be bass that would use that to spawn. Um, you know, like this secondary rounded one right here. You know, if I was to go there and probably throw a shaky head or a swim bait, um, that's the kind of stuff that I would start on or at least look at, and that's the name of our video. So I'm trying to give you some pointers of what I would do if I was to go to Shasta. And this creek arm right here to me has a lot of flats. It looks like a lot flatter area over here. You know, a lot deeper water. To me, it just looks neat. You know, that was that one that had that dirtier water in it. Um, I don't know, I just, when I look at it from, from the high up picture of this Google deal, I just, I like this creek arm. That's the creek arm I'm starting in. It's got a little bit of it all. It's got timber and flats and protected pockets rocks i don't know guys that's that's where i'd start you know you can see how flat this thing was at one time all this was underwater so you know that's all habitat for bass you know so i feel like at one point this creek had as many bass in it as anywhere so now they're all bottlenecked into this what's left of it so i feel like the population of bass looks like squaw creek arm has to be higher in that arm over the others because it has so many flats all through all this you know and we talk about that a lot there's a lot of flats down through here too look at that pocket there that was a big basin right there so all those fish that used to live in here now it all be bottlenecked down in there that's the kind of stuff i look for when i go to a lake you know I, this lake's obviously been low for a long time so those fish that lived up there 2012 they're dead now so it's probably all changed. They're all now related to the new flats on this lake, but that kind of gives you an idea of what I look for when I go to a lake. And man, I hope and pray you guys get some water because that poor lake is low, 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 low. Lots of timber though, man. You could go back through here throwing a top water around some of this timber. That'd be kind of fun, I would think, or a big swim bait. But guys, that's where to start. I tried Lake Shasta. You guys let me know if I was even close. I'd love to go out there and fish it. I, I think California, I've always said it's one of the most beautiful states that we have in the country, other than Oklahoma right here. I love Oklahoma, but it's just a cool state. It has, you know, it's where all our food comes from, a lot of it anyway, but um, yeah, you guys need some rain out there bad. Congratulations to uh, Mr. Mooney who won the battery. You guys leave a comment, subscribe. Uh, man, we'll be doing it all again next month in the month of May. I just wanted to show you, man, I got my new shirts on Project E. It's all about fishing. I got one of my new hats on. Um, got these on my website, guys. Uh, uh, um, we've been selling a bunch of them, but if you guys want some, just go to the website and check them out. But appreciate you guys following along, and we'll see you next week.